Hey guys, it's Vincent with Vasco Toys. Today I have a tutorial for you. I'm going to walk you through how I made this sidewalk diorama base. Let's take a look at it. Vasco Toys. Action figure dioramas and props. Okay, so before we get into the tutorial, the reason that I'm doing this is because someone recently commissioned a diorama base just like this one from me, and I didn't film any of it, and after the fact, I kind of thought this could be a cool video, especially for people who are beginners, so I figured I would do another one and show you guys that entire process. And here I have all the materials that I use, all the tools that I used. So basically what you have, um, we have a T-square, we have a box cutter, X-Acto knife, paint brushes for dry brushing and for uh, black washing, this sculpting tool that I like to use to define my lines, and then as far as the paints go, acrylic paints, um, we had apple barrel, pewter gray, apple barrel, granite gray, and then I have my black wash, which is basically water, black acrylic paint, dish soap and then some brown and some green uh, mixed in to make to make my wash so with all that said we'll get into the actual steps of how i made this piece so the first thing we need to do is get our xps foam i've got a big sheet of it here i buy the, it in bulk when i can because it's a cost save and i'm going to measure out exactly how wide and how deep i want this diorama base to be which is going to be 18 inches wide by 14 inches deep and so the process that i'm doing right now is just marking those lines off so that i can make sure that i um, am cutting a straight line with the t-square just to guide myself and um, get that base piece cut out so uh, so you guys don't have to watch this in real time. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up So now we're going to carve the different blocks of the sidewalk. We use the X-Acto knife to actually make the initial cuts. Then we're going to use this clay sculpting tool that I've gotten at Dollar General. And we're going to use that to indent the lines, make them more defined. After that, we'll use a ball of tin foil to put some texturing down and give it more of a realistic look. Here I'm measuring exactly how long and wide I want the sidewalk pieces to be. I went with four inches by four inches for this piece. So I'm just measuring all those lines and now I'm using those lines to make sure that I've got some nice straight horizontal cuts. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here vertically measuring four inches out at a time and then using that T-square to line up all those measurement marks and cut those vertical cement lines. Now it's time to use our clay sculpting tool just to define the lines that we've just carved, which is what you see me doing here first vertically and then I go across horizontally very carefully to make sure I only hit in my lines. Now that that's done, it's time to use a ball of tin foil to texture the foam. What I'm trying to do here is just get uh, some coverage with different areas of pressure. I'm going light in some spots, heavier in others, to get some different indentations throughout the sidewalk base. I want this to look a little bit more realistic, so I want to make sure that everything is not uniform in this step. So I didn't record this part because it was kind of difficult to work it out where you guys would actually be able to see what I was doing on camera. So I'm just going to explain real quick. Um, I defined kind of where the sidewalk slabs are. 
by carving one horizontal line with the X-Acto knife over and then using that sculpting tool to dig that in more. And then I've got one, two, three, four um, vertical lines in the front to define each piece of the sidewalk. And I, that's the same effect that I had all around. So now what I'm gonna do is just do that same texturing technique that I showed you guys in the previous shot with the tin foil rolled up and I'll do that all, all the way around. Okay guys, we're ready to paint this now. So I'm gonna start out with a base coat of this Apple Barrel Pewter Gray. I used to base coat almost everything in black, and over time I just kind of realized that that um, wasn't the best thing for me to do. So when I'm base coating, I don't bother you know, taking a canvas out or anything. I just kind of put some paint on there, take my paintbrush, and then I'm just going to get co full coverage on this. And if I need to put down more paint, I can do that. But we're going to do several things with this. So this is just, like I said, the base coat. Um, so if it's not, we're not trying to do anything more than just cover this with the base coat. And then we are going to do some highlights with dry brushing, which is a technique that I probably overuse, but I love. Um, and then after that, we're going to do some uh, some washes and we're gonna do a black wash which is really more of a, a mixture wash it's not just black paint water and dish soap I've got some I usually do some brown and um, green in my black wash which is something that if you watch black magic craft that um, he suggests and I, I find works really well for the dial pieces that I'm making and I'm just trying to get the paint in the cracks. Um, as you guys see, I kind of am working my brush horizontally and vertically in the frame. I want to get paint in there, but I don't want so much paint that it's going to build up. Um, it's going to take away from the, the sidewall crack because we, we want those sidewall cracks to exist. So we want to just make sure we get the paint in there, but it doesn't basically build up uh, enough that it's going to erase our crack that we worked to carve in the last step. And also sometimes with the lighter colors, if, if I were base coating this in um, maybe like a tan or something like that, it would poss be possible that I would have to go over this more than once because if I'm painting on the side like I am right now of the of the Owens Corning foam that has the Pink Panther on it, sometimes the, the one coat of a lighter paint won't cover that uh, those black lines up. We definitely don't want those to come through in our final piece. So what I will do with this is just kind of let this dry and assess if I feel like I need um, to do another to do another coat of it. But right now it looks pretty good. So I'm thinking I probably won't. The last thing to do, and I'm gonna do this part off camera just cause it's a little awkward, is to get all four sides. And I'm also gonna paint underneath cause you don't want to leave any pink, even for the parts of the dial that are not going to be visible. Um, just for, just as like a professionalism kind of thing. So for this step, um, I am going to go ahead and dry brush this with um, some of this Granite Gray by Apple Barrel. And I mentioned in the last step that I thought I was only gonna need one coat of that base gray, and I was wrong. I needed two coats to get um, full coverage of that without any of that black from the Pink Panther um, emblem to come through. So I was, I was mis mistaken about that, but um, now we're all set and we're ready to start the next step, which like I said, is dry brushing. So if you've watched some of my other tutorials, you've seen me do dry brushing before. So I'm just gonna kinda show you guys what I'm trying to do here, and then I'm gonna move on to the, to the next step. 
but really I'm, I'm I always start by outlining like where the for example this is a sidewalk so where those sidewalk um, pieces cracks whatever you want to call them meet each other and I try to highlight those first And then there's some other paint work that we're going to do with this too after we get this step finished. So I'll just speed this up and so you guys don't have to watch me do this entire thing. Okay guys, I'm gonna black wash this piece, and I say black wash, it's not only black paint um, and water, so just to kind of clarify what is in here, the mixture, I have um, black paint, I have water of course, I have Dawn dished soap, and I have a little bit of brown and a little bit of green mixed in there, um, just because I feel like that is a little bit more of a realistic look. So we're gonna get this on there. I should have mixed this on camera, but I didn't, apologies for that. But if you want to know how I made my black wash, go watch Black Magic Craft's video on how he makes his black wash. Mine is the same kind of thing. So um, with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this brush and apply it. And I'll speed this up so you guys don't have to watch the whole thing in real time. But basically, I'm just gonna get a, a little bit on the brush. Then I'm gonna start in the back, and I'm just going to try and do a square at a time. And just finish that throughout the, uh, throughout the piece. Try not to have any crazy globs of black wash accumulating on any particular area. And wanna make sure that it does get in the cracks. this entire piece. Thank you. 
also on the side going to make sure that I get this stuff as it's dripping because I don't want those drips to, to stay after we're done. After I finish painting, I let the black wash dry in the sunlight, and this is our final product here. If you wanted to, you could add some brown with dry brushing to add some dirt effects, but I just wanted this to be a, a pretty basic version of this, so I'm okay with the way this looks, but of course you can always vary your paint job. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. I hope that uh, it inspires you to go try to make a piece like this and if you do try to make something like this please leave me some comments let me know how it went let me know um, if you have any questions um, and also if you could subscribe to the channel of course and also hit the bell notification so you're aware of when we have our other tutorials coming out and all of the other kinds of content that we have planned that'd be awesome other than that we'll see you guys in our next episode